Hi guys. Um, in this episode, we're going to talk about cost functions. All right. So um, first thing you should remember in economics, when we say cost, we actually mean something more than uh, accounting costs. So we distinguish between accounting costs and economic costs. So accounting cost is basically the real uh, sort of total amount of money you pay to produce something, right? Um, so it's the it's the uh, the cost of, uh, uh, for example, producing a car. But what about economic cost? Economic cost is always higher than, or maybe equal, uh, but it's never less than uh, econ accounting costs. So economic costs. Uh, includes uh, uh, what we call opportunity costs. Um, why do we include opportunity costs into economic costs? Because it makes the comparisons much easier, right? Because the uh, economic costs already includes the opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is basically the, uh, you know, the benefit of uh, the, the, the second best alternative, all right? Uh, so when you compare... Uh, whether to produce something or not to produce, or when you, for example, calculate the profit. So that profit is not the accounting profit. It's not amount of cash you're going to raise by selling or producing, you know, certain amount of outputs, but it's basically, uh, you know, this plus on top of that, you know, the, uh, the, the, the benefit you could get or the loss. Uh, so the benefit doesn't have to be positive. So the benefit or the loss you could get if you were to do something different than producing and selling those goods, so that what would be your outside option? So your outside option is already incorporated into your, into the firm's profit function, and so that means, uh, you know, when we talk about whether a firm is going to produce or exit the market, so we can assume that the exit condition is like, you know, the cost is greater or less than zero. Why zero? Well, because uh, now the alternative, the benefit or the cost of alternative is already included in the profit, right? And so what I, I mean, I, that means we are normalizing the cost of uh, outside option or the benefit of outside option. And hence, all you have to do is to compare the profit uh, with respect to, or the cost with respect to zero. Okay, um, so... I mean, hopefully later we are going to solve some exercises and so it will be clearer in these exercises. So there are some simplifications assumptions I will be making. Well, one of them is that we're going to be assuming, you know, two inputs. And then, for example, capital, which we denote by K and labor, which we denote by L. So the capital can be measured uh, in, in capital hours or units, all right? And the labor is measured by labor hours or units. Um, so inputs are hired in a competitive market, meaning, you know, the inputs are not free. So the capital has a cost of uh, R. So it's, you know, why R, why not P? Well, because R is sort of the rent, rent of capital. And the labor, the cost is W, which sort of corresponds to wage. All right. So again, the inputs are not free. Each input has a price. So the R is the price of capital. W is the price of labor. So the producer is kind of consumer in input market. All right. Uh, you know, as a producer, you demand capital, you demand labor. And if you want to consume some certain levels of capital and labor, you have to pay those prices. So your expenditure is going to be there for, or your cost is going to be very simple. R times K plus W times L, right? So if you hire L units of labor times uh, W plus if you buy K units or rent K units of capital times R. So this is going to be your total cost. Well, yes, there's also the, this idea of fixed cost, right? 
uh, for example, if you are an R&D company, um, so it's not just labor and, 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 and or capital, but you need to spend some amount of time uh, to build, to generate the product. And so, uh, and once you produce, sort of once you, you know, come up with the idea, the production of this product, for example, if it is a software, right, the production of the sort of additional uh, CDs is very negligible. And so there's also this idea of, you know, uh, fixed costs, sunk costs. So they're, they're not included here. So we're talking about variable costs. Okay. So the, uh, but for simplicity, I'm going to ignore the fixed cost or the sunk cost. So therefore, most of the times when we talk about cost, we can say this is the total cost uh, denoted by C of Q equals to RK plus. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not really a function of Q now. It's just cost. It's in fact a function of K and L for now, RKWL. But the thing is, obviously, I would like to write my cost function as a function of quantity, right? I mean, uh, why is that so? Well, I, I really do not want to worry about uh, the capital labor uh, units that I need to hire. I just want to see for most of the decisions, it's easier, sort of skipping a step. Uh, what is my cost if I want to produce, you know, Q amount of output? What if my cost if I produce two Q units of output? So if you want to see this relationship, well, then I have to transform this cost function into a function which depends only on Q by using the technology. All right. So what is the technology? Technology is basically the production function, right? So yes, you have some capitals, you have some labors, but you know, the, when you bring this capital and labor, you know, it creates a synergy. And so the synergy is called as technology. So, or, or production function. Okay. Well, what is the objective of a, of a firm? Well, the, it's, it's, it's sort of simpler than consumer theory, right? The consumer is aiming to maximize his or her uh, utility. And we, we spend, you know, significant amount of time talking about where this utility coming from. Uh, but it's easier for the producer because, you know, most of the firms, unless they are uh, non nonprofit organizations, uh, well, they, 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 they aim to maximize profit. Well, again, this is not accounting profit. This is economic profit. So, but what is profit? Well, oops, profit. Well, profit is simple. It's uh, revenue minus costs always. So it's basically, uh, once again, revenue minus cost. So what is revenue? Revenue is uh, simple. It's price, you know, uh, you know, price per unit of output you sell times the quantity uh, that you sell minus the cost of producing this quantity. Um, <clears throat> well, let's bring them together. So what is my, uh, well, let's suppose the price is a fixed parameter. All right. So let's suppose that this is a price taker firm. It's a, it's a firm, it's a producer operating in a perfectly competitive market and so takes the price as given, all right? Meaning the price is not going to change whether you produce zero units of output or very large units of output. And obviously this is not always true. In different markets, for example, if, if there's only one firm monopoly, well then P is also a function of quantity. But let's suppose for simplicity for now, uh, this is a, a producer operating in a perfectly competitive market. And so the price is a fixed number, all right? The firm is going to take it as given. So it's not a choice variable. Well, times Q. Well, what is Q? Q is F of KL, right? This is how much pre uh, outcome you can produce. Well, minus cost. Well, what is cost? As we argued, uh, again, by assumption and for simplification assumption, there's no fixed cost, no sunk costs. So it's all RK plus WL is the cost. And so because of this minus cost thing, it becomes minus RK minus WL. All right? So this is the profit. And this profit is a function of K and L. 
I do not write this profit as a function of PKL. Uh, why is that so? Well, because P is not a choice variable for the supply, uh, for the producer. P is a number given to the producer, all right? For that reason, we do not write P into the parentheses. So therefore, that means we only put the variables into this parentheses that the producer can choose. And those variables are K and L. Once again, we do not write R, for example, into this parenthesis or W into this parenthesis. Once again, because the producer is <clears throat> a price taker also in the input market. All right, so the producer is a price taker on the output market and also input market. And hence, R is a fixed number for this producer. Same for W and same for P. Well, what is the choice variable for this firm? Well, simple, K and L. Only choose how much capital you would like to use and how much labor you would like to use. That's it. To do what? To maximize profit, obviously. Uh, we can maximize the profit function in two different ways, right? One way, you minimize the cost and then determine the profit maximizing output. All right. So this is the first approach or the first exercise we're going to do. Well, what's the benefit of doing this? Um, well, uh, by doing this, you, you get the cost function. And by getting the cost function, by minimizing cost, you get the cost function. And by getting the cost function, you actually get the supply curve. And then by using this idea of supply curve, you know, individual supply curve, we can uh, sort of uh, derive the market supply, etc. Um, so that's one way. The alternative way is, well, you just maximize the profit by choosing the input levels. All right. You know, don't worry about the cost. Uh, just, just find the inputs K and L to maximize the profit. So how can you do this? So either way should lead to the same conclusion, all right? If not, well, that means you're, you're doing something wrong. Uh, but we are going to look at the first approach first, and then we're going to talk about the second approach second.